ingenious tricks used in the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa. When working on the world-famous painting Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci was contributing something to the world of art that had never been seen yet. What was that exciting contribution? Did you know about the artist who committed suicide because of the Mona Lisa? Welcome to Art and Beyond, and today we will crack the questions about one of the most famous paintings, the Mona Lisa by da Vinci. Currently, the world is saturated with portraits. Once, there was a time when wealthy merchants during the Renaissance in Florence followed a trend of commissioning a picture that may be once in their lifetime, not only because of the likeness but also to show off their status and position. It's said that the world-famous Mona Lisa was a portrait like this. The woman in this painting is Lisa Gerardini, wife of Francesco del Giocondo, a Florentine silk merchant that had commissioned the portrait. Leonardo da Vinci began his work on the Mona Lisa in the year 1503 and was still in his studio when he died in the year 1519. As I mentioned earlier, he was contributing something to the world of art that had never been seen yet because he really was a genius not only in the painting, but also was a theorist, a scientist, an engineer, architect, anatomist, mathematician, inventor, sculptor, botanist, musician, and writer. It is said that this masterpiece took 12 out of 14 years to perfect the Mona Lisa's smile by spending nights with cadavers peeling off its skin and studying the underneath muscles and nerves to study the origin of facial nerves and muscle movement when a person smiles. Da Vinci used many tricks in his painting the Mona Lisa. He also showed his caliber in science whilst making this portrait. An object seems sharper when looking straight at it, and it looks a little blurred or seems to be far away when looked at it peripherally. He also realized that the light rays hit the whole area of the retina and the fovea. The central area can detail color and small things. Black and white shades and shadows are picked by the area around the fovea. If one gazes directly at her mouth, it seems that she is not smiling as the tiny details are caught by the retina, and it appears blurred when looked somewhere apart from the mouth that sight of the mouth is caught peripherally. With all of this knowledge, he made a puzzling smile on the Mona Lisa. Luc Maspero, a young French artist, committed suicide, and the reason for his death was said to be the mysterious smile on the Mona Lisa. On the 23rd of June 1852, from the fourth floor window of a Paris hotel, he jumped into death after writing his last letter. For years, I have grappled desperately with her smile. I'd prefer to die. During the Middle Ages, it was really quite challenging for the artist to produce natural skin colors, which led to the technique Verdaccio. Verdaccio was another trick used by da Vinci in his painting The Mona Lisa. It's a technique from underpainting that originated in the early Renaissance from Italian fresco painters. This technique has been called dead coloring, and it gives a realistic appearance of veins under the skin as the final paint won't be affected on applying it. Are you a lover or even a fan of the Mona Lisa? Then smash that subscribe button so hard that your lover gets jealous. Next trick used by Leonardo was the sfumato. He describes sfumato as without lines or borders in the manner of smoke or beyond the focus plane. The term sfumato means soft, vague, or blurred. It's easy to define this technique, but difficult to make it possible without visible strokes of a brush. To make the image more realistic, this method of painting is used to lighten the change between colors. Look at her lips. There are no lines there, right? And also, her lip tone is similar to skin, so he used his sfumato trick here with superb shades by blending different colors. This same technique is used, which cannot point to a perfect area in her brown eyes and can't find out whether she's looking at us or not when we move. The confusing nature of the portrait is all because of this technique. Another one is the chiaroscuro technique. He was famous for his chiaroscuro technique of painting during the Renaissance period. It's an Italian term formed by a combination of words chiaro, meaning clear or bright, and oscuro, meaning obscure or dark. It's an artwork using dark and light contrasts that create an impressive effect and three-dimensional quality to the painting. Moving on to the next one, he used another method called the aerial perspective or atmospheric perspective. 
It's a technique that increases the realistic feel and depth of illusion in a painting. There are mainly four elements in this technique. When the object is away from the observer, its size decreases, its detailing decreases, the object's tone decreases, and the colors of the object fades. He used this on the landscape behind to show the change in atmosphere when the distance increases. Glazing, or glaze painting, is the next trick that da Vinci used on the Mona Lisa. It's mostly used with oil painting. This technique of applying a semi-transparent layer over the main color on a painted surface gives it quite an exquisite look. It cannot be applied until the main colors of the painting are dried. Glazing is a lengthy process, and it's found that about 30 layers with a thickness of only a few micrometers were applied on the areas of the skin. He applied it in multiple layers to create a combination of colors in all visible layers. Art lovers are fond of the Mona Lisa. Now that you have more in-depth knowledge as to how it was made, why don't you let us know the fact that struck you in the comment section below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. And also, please check out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.